Chapter 19 is about economic inequality, and so we're going to look at inequality both within countries like the United States and around the world, uh, and look at a number of different measures of inequality and also what we can do uh, about inequality. So already this semester we've looked at a number of different mar models that lead to uh, asymmetric or unequal economic outcomes, so different uh, levels of bargaining power, uh, labor markets between employees and employers, credit markets between borrowers and lenders. And so we want to think about why these asymmetries or inequalities occur, what we can do to reduce inequality, and when we want to reduce inequality and when we want to accept uh, what the market outcome is. So first we're going to look at trends in economic inequality both within and between countries. So we'll look at the history of income inequality, for instance, in the United States, and also the change in inequality uh, between the United States and other countries. We'll look at types and sources of inequality. Uh, and we'll look at when uh, we want to address inequality and if we decide to do so, how we should do it. So this is a graph that we saw earlier in the semester, and it ranks countries by their average income from poorest to richest. This data is from uh, 1980 and lists uh, income by 2005 purchasing power parity dollars. And so it controls for both uh, inflation and for different purchasing uh, prices within countries. And so you can see that you know, most of the world's poor lived in China, Indonesia, and India in 1980, and most of the world's rich uh, lived in the United States, Europe, and Japan. And so since 1980, we've seen some fairly big changes. So probably the biggest change has been the growth of China. And so you can see now China, which was at the bottom in 1980, is now about two-thirds of the way up. India has also moved up, Indonesia has moved up, uh, and the rich in all countries have gotten richer. Um, so the poor in most countries are still very poor, so the bottom decile in most countries still has very little income. Um, it's only in the very developed countries where the poor have uh, more uh, ability to purchase consumption. So when we think about inequality, we can think about a number of different types of inequality. So with wealth inequality, uh, that is how much people own. And wealth inequality is <clears throat> generally more unequal than income inequality. Uh, so you can see that if we calculate the Gini coefficient, for instance, in both the United States and Sweden, it's uh, above 0.8. It's almost at 0.9. Remember, a wealth inequality of one is when one person has all of the wealth. Um, it's a little bit lower in Japan. Uh, earnings inequality, so the green bar is earnings inequality before taxes, what we would call market income. Um, and you can see that it is higher in the United States than in Sweden and Japan, but not by a whole lot. So it's just a little under 0.5. And it's between 0.4 and 0.5 for all three countries. And then disposable income is market income minus the taxes that you pay, uh, but plus the transfers that you get. So that might include uh, anything that you get from the government, like unemployment benefits or uh, food stamps, etc. And you can see that Sweden reduces uh, its inequality between market inequality and disposable income inequality the most. Disposable income inequality is lower uh, in the United States than earnings inequality, market income inequality, but uh, it's higher than in both Sweden and Japan. So if we look at the trends in income inequality over, say, the last hundred years, uh, we can kind of divide countries into two groups. Uh, in all countries that we have measurements for, income inequality fell between, say, the turn of the century uh, and the middle of the 20th century and reached a low sort of in the mid-1970s for this group of countries and then started to increase. So that includes countries like the United States, the UK, China, India, whereas another group of countries was able to keep inequality relatively low. So that includes uh, countries like Japan, Germany, France, Sweden, Denmark, etc. 
Um, and so you can see that in those countries, the top 1% of uh, takes about 5 to 10% of income, uh, which is similar to where these countries were in the middle 1970s. Um, but these countries now are often above 15% uh, and all of them are above 10%. The United States is at about 20% back where they were during, say, the 1920s. If we look at global inequality uh, altogether and the Gini coefficient, uh, the blue line is the measured uh, inequality for all individuals around the world. And so you can see it's still very high but has been decreasing uh, slowly. The red line here is inequality between countries as if each person in that country earned the average income, right? So it's hypothetical, it's not real, but you can see that the uh, global inequality between countries has been falling faster than actual inequality of all people in the world.